guys, please don't make me eat the bomb. <laughs> everybody, welcome back to another episode of Giri's Kitchen. This week, we'll be making authentic pad thai with a side of satay chicken skewers and peanut sauce. And then before we start, if you like my content and if you wanna see more, uh, make sure you click the subscribe button, ring the bell notification, and drop a like and all those wonderful things. And let's jump into the video. There are several things that we have to prep ahead of time. I actually wrote like a little sticky to remind myself what to do in case I forget. So before we start, the first thing that we should be doing is soaking our noodles. So this is the pad thai noodle that I got. Just a regular rice noodle you want to go for one that is thin but not super wide you kind of want to go for this one which is about four millimeters or something like that we're not going to boil the pad thai noodles we're going to be just soaking it until it's soft i want to make sure that the bowl is big enough to hold all my noodles and also a big bowl of water um monkey you know what i'm just gonna soak everything <laughs> oh shit i don't think this bowl is big enough wait oni bro can you give me the bigger one i like to stuff a lot of things into something that's too small okay this is definitely too much noodle but who the fuck cares i'm gonna go to my sink i'm gonna fill this with just regular tap water don't worry about the temperature we're aiming to soak this for about 30 minutes to an hour so by the time that we finish prepping everything else it should be about an hour don't cough pom pom you're gonna make chat sad if you cough too much chat will be sad and they'll think that i'm like being mean to you or something. So stop coughing, bitch. I was gonna bring it to the desk to show you guys, but this is way too heavy for me. I'm just gonna leave it here. <laughs> Tamarind paste is one of those things where you can buy the grocery store. At my local grocery store, they do sell tamarind paste, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm not a fucking noob, so I'm not gonna buy tamarind paste. I'm gonna make my own tamarind paste. <laughs> The reason why I would recommend that you make tamarind paste yourself. So for the pre-made ones, they tend to diminish the sour aspect of the paste. So if you wanna go for the true authentic taste with like a stronger tamarind flavor, the best way is to actually make your own tamarind paste. If your grocery store does have tamarind pulp, which is basically just the flesh of the tamarind, and then all you have to do is kind of break it up, soak it. Oh, I, I forgot to make hot water. I'm actually pressing really hard with my fingers, but it doesn't really budge. So it's not very soft. It does take a little bit of hot water to kind of dissolve everything. I would not recommend using cold water or lukewarm water just because it's not hot enough to kind of make sure it gets in between the different fibers of the pulp and really dissolve it evenly. If you cook it the way that I'm showing you guys today, you can literally keep this in the fridge for like months and months and you can even freeze it and then you can just saw it out and use it whenever you need to. So this is tamarind pulp. I have actually haven't worked with tamarind pulp before. This is my very first time and we're going to use half of it. We're not going to use the whole thing because I don't want to make like a huge, huge batch. Uh, okay. Obviously, it's a nice big chunk. There's no way that we can dissolve a nice big chunk of this if, if you just plop it into the bowl and then put it into the hot water. So what we're gonna do is actually use our fingers to kind of pull it apart. I gotta change gloves now. <laughs> it's magic now. Guys, I, I'm, a, I'm a magician. Ooh! I'm stupid, I'm sorry. I deserve to be bullied. So for the amount of water that you put in, you kind of just eyeball it. There really is no like set measurement, but you don't want to put in so much where later when we're making the actual paste, it's just all liquidy and like water texture. We still want it to be like a thick, saucy consistency. Don't do this with your fingers at home, okay? With, with, when you're not wearing any gloves or any protective gear. I'm only doing this because one, I cook a lot. So my fingertips are kind of desensitized to hot stuff. And also because I have a morph suit on and also with gloves and everything, I feel a little less. This has to kind of sit here for maybe 30 minutes. So this is also takes a little bit of time to do. So we're gonna put this onto the side and we're gonna come back to it later. Where's my agenda? I gotta look at it again. Toast peanuts. Okay, very, very important component of pad thai. I say important because I love peanuts. <laughs> I love penis. I love penis. <laughs> okay. This literally means uh, with clothes, penis. It just means that the skin is on. But we're gonna make the peanuts naked for pad thai and stuff. You realize that the peanuts, they don't have the skins on them. I don't think it'll taste very good with the skins on. So what we're gonna do is roast them first. So I'm gonna turn the heat on to low because I don't wanna risk burning the peanuts. I am winging this because I have never dry roasted peanuts on a pan before. So I don't really know what to expect. I feel like every time I start streaming, I'm like coming in between like Chat's way and Oni Bro. Hello, I exist too, guys. Everyone wants to talk to Oni Bro and K. 
kiss him and like, I don't know, fuck him or something. No one wants to fuck me. The whole time that chat was bullying me, I have been tossing the peanuts because peanuts burn very easily, obviously. And because I don't have oil in the pan, it can burn even easier. So I'm always careful with the fire and also always like stirring it around to keep it agitated. I don't know where the misunderstanding went, but like you do know that you guys live in my dungeon and that you're my slaves, right? This is not Oni Bro's harem. This is my harem. You are awkward and custom. <laughs> not you take that back <laughs> i think this is more or less done now it begs the question how am i supposed to disrobe all my peanuts so put your uh, roasted nuts with the skins on in a towel or a paper towel and then you just kind of grab everything together and then you kind of just shake it and mush it my nuts are busting out of my sack Okay, now I got a towel. Let's see if this is better. Okay, rolling. Oh my god, everything is spilling. It's not really coming off though. Should I should I like be rougher? Should I be rougher with it? Yes. Okay, no, I'm gonna I'm just gonna squeeze it now. That feels kind of good. <laughs> it's kind of fun to squeeze the nuts. It's like nice and warm and it smells really good. Please don't take that out of context, guys. Okay, Oni bro, please help me. I don't I do not have the time for this shit. Okay. You take this and then you just pick out the peanuts with no skins on it and then you give them back to me, okay? Oh my god, there's so many peanuts on the floor. Okay, it's fine. Pop Pop can just eat it. Okay, stand. Ah, there you go. We're gonna marinate the chicken now. So the original recipe for the saute chicken skewers called for coconut milk, which I had. I had coconut milk, so I didn't go out to buy coconut milk. Yesterday, I went to collect all my ingredients to film and everything, and then I realized that my coconut milk has turned into naturally fermented coconut yogurt. So I'm substituting the coconut milk just for today with regular whipping cream. Chicken thigh, you guys know how I feel about chicken thighs. I fucking love chicken thighs. Since we're making skewers, they shouldn't be too big, but if they're too small, they won't really taste that good either. So we're aiming for, for this size. I feel like this is a nice skewerable size. So for the marinade, one eighth cup of coconut milk. So soy sauce, I'm gonna eyeball it. And then one teaspoon of curry powder, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Turmeric powder is mostly there for a little bit of flavor, but I would say mostly to get that nice yellow color. A flip? What happened? Okay, garlic. Because I am mincing it, I'm actually not gonna chop it. I'm actually gonna use a grater. I like to go for the bigger one so that when I'm grating it, it'll be a little safer. And then just remember, there's a lot of extra flesh still stuck on the grater. So make sure that you just get all of it. You don't wanna miss any of the ginger, or sorry, the garlic. So for ginger, nice way to peel ginger without actually having you to use your knife to cut it. It's just use a spoon to scrape it off. You just use your spoon and kind of just grate it off. I'm just shaving half of it. I'm not shaving the whole thing. I don't want to be grating the whole thing, just a little bit. I'm gonna eyeball it again. Half a teaspoon of brown sugar. That looks like half. Half a tablespoon fish sauce. This is the fish sauce that I use. I think I would recommend the one that has three crabs on it. I heard that one is better tasting. Fish sauce is quite salty. I find it a lot saltier than soy sauce. Be wary of that when you're putting it in with other like salty seasonings and stuff like that. And then salt and peppers. I'm gonna forget the salt for now. I'm gonna do the salt later. So this is nice and mixed. We're just gonna let this marinate and sit for a little bit. We're gonna chop the peanuts first. How fine you wanna go is up to you. You can definitely throw this into a food processor. That probably would be the easier option. So what we're gonna do now is prepare the sugar. So one key... Oh, I forgot. I forgot to make my tamarind sauce. We can actually start cooking this down now. Earlier, it was in like large big chunks when in the hot water. Now the water is like lukewarm and then the flesh is kind of like disintegrated a little bit. We're gonna use our hands and then we're gonna smush everything together to kind of peel the pulp away from the pits of the tamarind. It's gonna be very, very squishy and you're gonna feel a lot of like kind of like debris and pulp and pits and stuff. We just wanna gently separate the flesh from the pits. So you can kind of see this one. There's like the pits of the tamarind, like the seeds of it. And then we're gonna strain all the pits away and throw it away. And then we're gonna cook down the extra sauce. I'm gonna grab a spoon. So I have a pot that I'm gonna be cooking the sauce in and I have a strainer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sift the sauce through the strainer and then we're gonna, whatever is left over is what we're gonna throw away. I like to use like the back end of the spoon to kind of push it down because it's like a bigger surface area. If you wanna be a little stingy, you can add a little bit of water more just to kind of like sieve through the rest of the pulp to kind of release any extra tamarind juice that's stuck on it, but you don't have to. And then I'm gonna dump it out and then we're gonna do the second half. So on low heat, we're just gonna cook it until it's boiling. Just keep stirring it, because there is some sh natural sugar content in tamarind. As soon as it starts boiling, 
you can just turn the heat off. You don't have to boil it for a very long time. You can see how it's quite thick, and that's what you're looking for. I'm gonna be storing my tamarind paste in this. If you have like jars for making jam and stuff, that's probably a better option because you can do it into separate little batches. So the next ingredient that we're gonna prepare is palm sugar. For pad thai sauce, there's three components. The sour component is going to be the tamarind paste. The sweet component is going to be the palm sugar. And then the salty component is going to be the fish sauce. That's all you need. The sauce is actually very, very easy. I do recommend that you get palm sugar instead of brown sugar, because it is a very unique taste. The recipe calls for three tablespoons. This more or less is actually three tablespoons already, so I'm just gonna cut everything. Ooh, it's actually very ASMR. So once you've cut it like this, you can just literally crumble it in your hands and then put it aside elsewhere. I think this is three tablespoons already, so I'm gonna set this aside, we don't need this. The next thing we need to prepare is the dried shrimp. For a more traditional or authentic taste, this dried shrimp is actually quite necessary. For those who don't like the taste of dried shrimp, I think you can omit it, omit it, so leave it out, but I think it will be better if you have it in just for the more authentic taste and a deeper umami flavor, like that seafood flavor. And you can see they're quite, they're quite dry, they're not very, very big and then just do a rough chop because we're going to be sauteing this with the shallots and garlic and everything else so you don't have to chop it too 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 fine but just enough where it can kind of break down okay i'm going to set that aside i'm going to chop the garlic i'm just going to cut off the butts of it first you guys know the drill i like to smack my garlic here and then just run your knife quickly through I'm gonna put this together with the shrimp because we're gonna be sauteing everything together at the same time. And then we have shallots. We're just gonna cut them in half. La, la, la. Na, da, da. Na, 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 na. I'm gonna chop them the same thing, the same way that I do for onions, which is just like the horizontal cut and then the vertical cut. And then I'm gonna put the shallots in with the shrimp and the garlic and everything. I think we're almost done. It's called choy po. It's salty, it's sweet, it's sour. It's a dried radish kind of thing. And they usually add that into pad thai as well for a little bit of the crunch. So I'm just gonna cut that open. This is what it looks like, choy po. And then we're gonna do like a small dice. Once I'm done cutting into long strips, I'm gonna arrange it so that it's uh, perpendicular to what I was doing earlier. So now the strips are facing this way instead of this way. And now we're just gonna run our knives through. So this is the size that I have right now for my choy po. I'm gonna set that into a separate bowl because I'm not gonna be stir frying it with the garlic and the shallots and everything. This is basically pressed tofu, but in Chinese it's daofu gan, which is tofu, dry tofu basically. We don't need the whole package. I'm probably gonna use half the package. The texture inside still looks like regular tofu. It's just very short and very dense because all the water is being squeezed out. I think I'm gonna do, uh, maybe I'm gonna have, uh, uh, I'm gonna have it and then slice it this way. So how you cut your tofu is up to you. There really is no like rule to how you wanna do it. I'm just slicing it kind of thinly. This is what I'm cutting it as, but you can do it like longer and thinner. You can do it, I don't know, shorter, fatter. I'll probably place it here because I'm running out of little bowls. This is the last component. We're just gonna cut the green onions. I'm gonna cut the butt off. We don't have to chop it because I'm actually gonna stir fry it into the pad thai at the very end. We're gonna be using mostly the greens because the greens cook the fastest. It's also a little sweeter and less spicy than the stalks. And then I'm just gonna chop it into like decent sizes, not too big, because we wanna make sure that everything can cook easily. And then one more thing, we're making pad thai, so obviously we need Thai chilies, okay? I like spicy food, so these ones are quite spicy, so I'm gonna put in three. If you wanna put more, put in more. If you wanna put in less, put in less. If you're a pussy, then don't put it in. Cut off the tip, of course, and then we're just gonna do a tiny little chop. And then I'm gonna put it with the garlic and the shallots, because we're gonna be stir frying those together. So we're gonna do the peanut sauce. There really is no specific recipe. I'm just gonna wing it. So I have chunky peanut butter. It can be smooth, obviously smooth, this is the more like commonly used option, but I prefer the chunky one. And then I'm gonna season it with oyster sauce. I like putting oyster sauce in for the bit of the sweet component and a bit of the salty component. Pound on it, doggy style. I'm gonna add a little bit of fish sauce for like that extra umami, just a little bit, because fish sauce is quite salty. And then just to sweeten up a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. Not too much. We're not, we're not trying to make the peanut sauce sweet. We're just trying to kind of balance the taste a little bit. Just regular peanut butter is quite thick. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of water to thin it up. It's slowly coming together. It looks a little funky in the beginning because peanut butter does want to separate because it's very, very thick, but it will, just give it some time. It, don't worry, it looks a little chunky. It's because of the, the chunky peanuts in itself because I'm using chunky peanut butter. I will taste it to see if I need to adjust anything. Mm. 
more salt. I'm gonna add soy sauce now. I feel like it's missing a little bit of the soy sauce component. I'm also gonna add a little bit of MSG. I think this is really yummy. I'm gonna stop the sauce right here. You can see it's like kind of really creamy now with like the chunky peanut bits inside. We are pan frying the chicken. I'm gonna turn the heat up to medium high. Ooh. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit more because I don't want the bottom to burn while the chicken is still not cooked through. Where's the piece that I cut? I'm gonna try it. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that's really good. Holy. So chicken is done. I'm gonna make the sauce now. I'm gonna heat up the palm sugar that we prepared earlier. This is three tablespoons of palm sugar that we're gonna cook and caramelize. And then we're gonna add three tablespoons of water to stop the cooking process and the caramelization. And then we're gonna do two tablespoons of fish sauce and four tablespoons of tamarind paste, okay? I'm gonna put the sugar in. Be careful not to burn the palm sugar because it can burn quite easily if you're not careful. I'm actually going to just do a very tiny low heat. Just wanna start to change color a little bit, that's when we can stop. I'm gonna get my water ready. You can see how the sides are kind of caramelizing already because the sides will heat up faster than the middle. Mix it a little bit, just be careful, be gentle. And you can see how it's turning a little bit brown now, so I'm gonna be careful now. Heat is still on, but it's on low right now, and I'm gonna, it's gonna sizzle because hot sugar with cold water will kind of sizzle a little bit and kind of shock the cooking process, but don't worry, with the heat on, it'll continue to melt together. So I'm gonna add four tablespoons. And don't worry, the sand is normal, don't be, don't be scared. And then we're gonna add two tablespoons of fish sauce. Everything will start to melt together eventually, so don't worry about it. And then four tablespoons tamarind paste. Okay, I'm going to eyeball it a little. That's probably one. That's probably two. That's probably three. And that's probably four. <laughs> Scrape the bottom a little bit if you need to. So this is done. I'm gonna turn the heat off now because all the sugar has dissolved, dissolved, it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan right anymore. Guys, it's pad thai time. Oh, I'm gonna drain the noodles. By now it's been soaking for two hours, okay? <laughs> It should have only been 30 minutes to an hour, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with soaking it extra long. If you want to make pad thai ahead of time, you can always make the sauce the night before. You can also soak the noodles the night before and then drain it so there's no more there's no more extra water in it. Put it into a bowl or like a Tupperware and then seal it nice and tight. And you can actually put that in the fridge and use it for the next day. I'm gonna turn the heat on. We're gonna need a lot of oil. So the heat is getting kind of hot. So I'm going to add my aromatics. And then once it starts to kind of wilt and become a little soft and get to know each other, we'll add the choy pulp. So I just added the uh, pickled radishes. I'm just gonna let that heat through a little bit. The chili, oh, oh God. Okay, the chilies are coming out. The chili flavor is releasing. Oh, oh. So I just added some of the toasted peanuts we made earlier and I'm tossing in the tofu to make sure that it's nice and cooked through. But with tofu, it's kind of hard to let the seasoning seep through. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt to kind of make sure that at least the tofu is evenly seasoned. Now I'm gonna add the noodle. I don't know how much. I'm gonna wing it. I'm gonna cut it a little bit to make it kind of easy to stir fry. And then now we're gonna add in the sauce too. All of it, all of the sauce. If the noodles are cooked through already and you keep cooking it, it will overcook. So I'm gonna cut the heat. I'm actually gonna taste it to see if it needs any more seasoning, if it needs more salt, if it needs whatever else, we can always add it. Mm. Okay, so. I could use a little bit more time. It is not very cooked through yet. I'm gonna push the pad thai to the side and leave a little bit of space on the pan to cook the eggs. So I'm gonna add more oil here. I'm gonna crack the eggs. I'm also adjusting the pan so that more fire is on the eggs and less fire is on the noodles. So the bottom of the noodles won't burn over. As the eggs are cooking, I'm going to cover the eggs, like 30 seconds, not very long. Now we can flip it over and you can see how the eggs are kind of like cooked through a little bit. And then now we're also going to add the veggies. So we're gonna add the green onion and we're also gonna add the bean sprouts. Pad Thai is a quite of a heavy dish, especially with all the oil that you saw me add earlier. You do need a little bit of vegetable to kind of brighten up the dish a little bit so you're not literally just eating noodles and oil, you know? I'm gonna keep cooking it a little bit until the bean sprouts and the green onions are wilted a little bit more. I'm gonna take one more bite just to make sure that the noodles are cooked through. The noodles are actually perfectly cooked now. The texture right now is al dente. It's not completely soft, but there's still a little bit of resistance on the, on the tooth. So you can still kind of bite through it. It's still a little bit chewy. This will be a lot easier if you had a wok, but I'm fake Chinese, so I don't have a wok. A few moments later. Wow. I'm gonna plate. There's a lot of pad thai. Oh, oh, it's steaming. A little bit of pad thai here. 
I'm gonna do a little bit of pad thai there. Usually with stir fried noodles, the stir fried ingredients tends to fall to the edge and not end up getting mixed in with the noodles. So just be careful and make sure that everyone has a little bit of like, you know, tofu and stuff like that. I still have my extra peanuts on top because there's never enough peanuts. Oni Bro gets a lemon, a lime wedge to be pretty. And I get a lime wedge to be pretty. And then I'm going to do the chicken. I'm gonna do a little bit of the peanut sauce so he can dip it. And this is the completed dish. Today we made pad thai, satay chicken skewers, peanut sauce, and I also added a little extra lime to kind of brighten things up. Guys, please don't make me eat the bomb. <laughs> Eventually. That's a fair amount, right? I don't want you guys saying that I'm pussying out, okay? Okay. <sighs> okay, it's it's spicy, but not too bad. A few moments later. Ah! <sighs> no, no, it's worse, it's worse, it's worse, it's worse. I'm crying. Oh, oh no. That was a bad one. It went down the wrong hole. It went down the wrong hole. Oh god, I'm crying. Do you guys see this? When you swallow it, it just coats the inside of your 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 throat. It's not just your tongue, it's your throat now too. Oh god. Oh my god, that was three burps. I think it's time for me to take a shit. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make love to my toilet right now. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys had fun. I'm really excited to dig in and eat my food because this looks extra, extra delicious. And I can't wait to see you guys next time for my next stream. I don't know what I'll be making, but make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with whatever I'm posting so you guys will know what I'm making next. And thank you so much for watching my video, everybody. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye!